So, uh, we are live. And I've just remembered that, wait, have I actually changed the title of the stream? Oh, <laughs> Hold on, I'll quickly check. It's thrown you off, going on the lift there, it's thrown you off. Okay, let's see. Uh, have I, well, it's not got a title, but that's okay. I'll, I'll just, okay, let's one moment. It's not got a title, but that's okay. I'll, I'll just. And if you're watching the stream, you may be able to hear me talking yes, as the stream is yeah. running over there. <laughs> I'll just let you mute the. Uh, mm -hmm. I know. But it's it's fun anyway. Okay. Rooms Bath is here. Hello, Rooms Bath. Hello. Hello. We, you got the memo. <laughs> Hello. Right. So. Uh, I will need chat to let me know how the audio quality is because this time I'm not running a compressor because there was some uh, background noise that was quite amplified last time. So I'm going to have to manually uh, level the, the audio's uh, inputs. So hello Yanni, hello Kango, who's in chat again. <laughs> uh, right, so now that we're all here. I can switch over to the correct scene. There we are. Oh, and do you not do you not want to explain to chat what's up with Kango's camera? I was I about to do that. Yeah. I was about to do that. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, because they they weren't able to cool. see Discord, yeah. they weren't able to see the scene. Oh, yeah, so I just switched yeah. to the scene. Okay. So yes, uh, for some reason Ka for Kango, Discord isn't working at the moment, and so he's not uh, able to do face cam. But usually he is. Yes. But he's here, uh, over uh, voice. <laughs> I am. Right. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully it will be better next week with the disco. It should be. It should be. Right, so, uh, we have actually discussed the... Uh, actually, no. We will not go into that now. It's better if it's a surprise. <laughs> mm. uh, this is something that we've discussed, Dodd. Uh, right. Yeah. So, would anyone like to do the recap, or should I? Mm. <laughs> uh, you can do it. Okay. <laughs> so, last time, on Star Trek Pathos, the USS Pathos got a new crew. Well, I, I say a new crew, most of a new crew. Several key positions are currently not filled. For example, the position of chief engineer is not filled and there is no uh, dedicated first officer. Also in terms of medical staff, there is no chief medical officer and a few other positions are also vacant, which will be filled soon-ish. Okay. You set off at Starbase 14 which is near the Klingon neutral zone. It, it is an, a border outpost. Your first mission is to investigate some strange subspace signals which seem to be emanating from a world within the neutral zone. And nobody thought that there was life on the system before, which is why you've been granted special permission to enter the neutral zone and to investigate. After you arrive there, you found out that the only population here is a single settlement of Neolithic peoples. And you've beamed down, introduced yourselves in a very TOS fashion. And you were led to a, the entrance of a temple built into the only hill in the immediate vicinity. Upon exploring this, you discovered several things perhaps the most important of which is that the walls are made of steel. No, not naturally occurring. <laughs> Hello, VGR. And you found what looked like an elevator shaft. Two of you went up, two of you went down. And we've not looked at what's happened with those who went up, but those who went down found a computer. Lots of mechanical moving parts, blinking lights, in a moss-covered chamber full of vines as well. The computer said that it was expecting you, 
And that is where we ended the session. You're going to lurk? That's fine. That is fine. Right, so. Should we continue with that scene first? I think we should. All right. So, we've got the captain. Uh, what is your name? Uh, captain Shun. Okay. And we've got a supporting character. What is your name? There's multiple. I meant in the scene. Okay. Uh, Tom... Dr. Tom Robin? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good job. Okay. A lieutenant. So, you're standing in front. Big computer. Ancient. It has just greeted you. What would you like to say? Okay. How long have you been here? The computer responds with, I have been here for 1,000 cycles. So, a very long time then. Doesn't respond. Do you have a particular way of referring to yourself? Oh, hold on, there was a notification. I'm not sure what that notification is. I, I, hold on. One moment, a technical issue. One moment, I need to quickly... I might see it on stream. I need, no, it won't show up on stream because I don't oh, have yeah. the element there. One moment. It's a, I, I forgot to add this previously, but hold on. Uh, paste reference. There we go. It, it should... Cut, it, sh cut. It, it should come up now, whatever, whatever that was. Sorry, I, I missed it. <laughs> anyway, right. <clears throat> Sorry, could you repeat the question, please? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a particular way of referring to yourself? There's... Affirmative. And what is that way? My designation is Arc Low. Alright, confirmed. Please state your questions. Why were you expecting us? I was broadcasting for relief. Wait, what was that? He said, I was broadcasting, broadcasting. for relief. For relief. Mm -hmm. Okay. For relief. How did you know you get asked specifically? Probably didn't. Yes. I did not. However, I have observed the Federation of Planets. I expected you would respond. What response were you looking for? I have a duty of care. I need to transfer. And what would you be transferring? I have a duty of care to transfer. <laughs> okay, I understand now. Uh, what needs to be cared for? There are lights uh, whirring and a tape, tapes moving and pistons going back and forth as it's 
thinking. And it says, the wood I need care. And the wood are who? The wood I, they are the people we met earlier. Oh. Yes. Oh, yeah. Affirmative. Yes. They are my children. How? Okay, yeah, and the, the computer then gives a very lengthy speech about the birds and the bees. No, sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, uh, <coughs> right. So you ask how. Correct? Your computer. Yeah. Yes. It responds with... They are the descendants for whom I was caretaker of. They are my children. It kind of makes and, sense. And how did you come to be taking care of them? It was my purpose. And who assigned you that purpose? The creators. I don't know. How? Oh. Yeah, love, love <laughs> how computers refer to their creators. It's very helpful. Mm hmm. <laughs> um, 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 so, um, you. They're in the Stone Age. Uh, okay. There's at least another, like, thousand years between there and what they're no closer to getting computers yes. that is a correct observation and then oh. and then Arclo says The discussion may only continue once we are gathered. Who are we waiting for? There is no response. <laughs> okay, well... How I, uh... I, I calms the other team, okay. and I suppose that would be a good time to switch and see what they yes, are doing. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> uh, looking up player names, <laughs> well, player character names. So, <laughs> Josef Westacre, as well as Jarlik Wissom, yeah. as well as yes. Jarlik Wissom, are exploring the upper parts of this structure, climbing up a moss and root covered shaft you eventually get to a hello swedar you get to a swedar yes no uh, right you get to a level uh, a corridor goes out above you the shaft seems to have collapsed however there is a corridor that is going out horizontally Hello, Blazar, as well. As you walk along this corridor, also covered in moss, you can see up ahead a faint pulsating red glow, glowing between some vines and roots that are hanging down from the ceiling. Wait, so we're, we're climbing up or down? You've climbed up, and now you're in a horizontal corridor that's going okay. off of the main shaft. Sure. Okay. By the way, I'm I am reading chat, but I'm not reading it out loud. But I am reading chat. It's right there. The okay. role playing may commence. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so. character. <coughs> yes. Okay, so 
So we're so we're currently looking at this pulsating red light that's like mm. in the place, like in ahead the of you. Vine, so. Yes. So ahead. Of, so as the corridor stretches out ahead of you, you can see there are vines hanging down in front of you, and beyond the vines is a pulsating red glow that's kind of bound. The, the light is bouncing around the corridor. You can't see what's causing it. You'd have to go further to investigate. Okay. Can I scan with a tricot with a big box thing? Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to, yes. Sure, I get, exactly out, I get out the yeah. box, fold it up. Actually, will that be folding it up or...? Uh, fold it down. There, you, you would flip open the top part and get out a... Actually... Or is it just the communicator? No, that's the... the, the, the yeah, no, no, no. It, it's a big box. You'd have to... Actually, I'll just get a picture. Let's go I won't be able to see it unless you post it in yeah, Twitch chat. I will. I was gonna say it's like it's like one of those old it's like one of those old phones where you flip the screen. No 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 no, <laughs> that's the communicator that looks like that. The one, the the tricorder you have looks like that. I've just posted a picture. Oh, I'm gonna also do it in <laughs> reference material on that's the That's so nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. It's got a a, a a thing. What's the word? Strap. A strap. Yes. To have around your shoulder. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so you want to scan? So give me a roll. There's going to be a difficulty zero, science plus reason check. Oh yeah, I can scan. True. Roll mm -hmm. twenty still works for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, can I ask uh, for difficulty zero um, tasks? If we chose to, would we have the option um, not to roll? Yes. But then you're passing up the opportunity to gain momentum. And also passing up the opportunity to give you more threat or complication. Or true. Just don't have a complication. Actually, oh yeah, they're the other supporting characters, true. There it is. <laughs> That's fine. One moment. Science was reason, sure. Okay. Remember to use your supporting character. Yes, that's why. Yeah. I nearly I think picked the other one. <laughs> two, two successes. Okay, right. So you've generated two momentum, which brings Ooh. us up to five momentum. Mm hmm. So, ahead of you is a subspace antenna. Right. It is broadcasting the signal that you picked up uh, in orbit and as well from uh, Starbase 14. There are no life signs other than plant and fungi life in the chamber ahead. What? Okay. Okay, I would relay the information to, well, West, West Acre. Okay. Also, chat, please let me know if audio, if people are too quiet yes, or too please. loud, please let me know. Yeah, so yeah, I, can yeah. fix it. I was talking quite quietly then. Mm -hmm. As well as true. Mr. W, a little bit. Uh, that's okay. So. What do you want to do in this situation? Well, no life signs. We might as well get going. And I'm going to go towards the antenna. Okay. Okay, same. Right, so I've boosted Mr. W a little bit because rooms both said that Mr. W is a bit quiet. Okay. Okay, cheers. So, as you enter the room, pushing aside the vines, you can see that there is a console <coughs> in the center of the room, partially covered by lichen as well as mosses. And out of the center of the console is a spire, an antenna. And there is a pulsating red light running up the antenna. And you can see from the consoles that it is broadcasting the signal seemingly Controlled by the structure's computer. Hmm. Controlled by what, sorry? The structure's computer. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know that there's... Oh, no, hang on. Is this like... Have we already been um, called no. by... Mm -hmm. This is happening no, before we that. Okay, so we don't know about this. So we don't know about this massive computer thing. No, you don't. Hmm. Huh. Uh, is this, are we, are we at like a dead end or is there further we can go? There were some passageways that branching off, 
but they've collapsed or are overgrown. You would need to use your phasers to cut through if you wanted to. Okay. Hello, Willis1961. They're not, they've not, okay. they, they've got a big red light, but not a big red button, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, um, do we, like, <clears throat> even though we can recognize that, that, you know, this is broadcasting this symbol, does it look like anything, um, that's known, like any kind of technology that's known to the Federation? If, if you, if you know yes, it is a quite ordinary subspace antenna. Right. Um, what could I roll to tell, to, to um, sort of, to, to get how long this has been here, potentially? That would be an, either an insight plus engineering or a reason plus engineering check. I'm going to say difficulty one. Insight plus engineering, that's ten. Uh, combat attack is how invade the ship more tactical systems get infiltration, emergency protocols and composure. Nope, none of those. Uh forty one, insight plus engineering. Here we go. Wow. Okay. Ah, Two nice. successes. Congratulations. Nice. Which means six momentum. Yes, we are at six momentum. <laughs> this is part of the structure. Part of the structure that is the mound that is covered in forests. This has been here for a millennium. Although, it obviously has only recently been activated, otherwise the Starbase would have uh, received the subspace signal before. Mm -hmm. Interesting. As you're been... like this is the hmm? third... Go ahead. This is the first time that it's been activated. 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 I forgot the word. Well, the first time in a thousand years. At this point, you hear a little bit of a beeping sound coming from your belt. It is your flip open. It's your your open your your flip phone. Flip your your communicator. God, I. The 90s phones then, yeah? No, no, 60s, 1960s. I'll post an image of it in both the chats, so you can see what it looks like. Is it, is it, from, is it from both of us or one of us? It is... I believe it would be Westacre, considering he's the higher-ranking individual. <laughs> okay, um... <laughs> <laughs> yes. As you can see, okay. he has earned that position of responsibility. There was a... That there was there, there was a, there was a logic to choosing this uh, to choosing this particular style of character. Um, okay. <laughs> Suppose yeah, okay. No, no, it, it's it's West, yeah, okay, it's okay, West okay, okay. but you can both hear it. So right. if you want to respond, yeah, you we'll... take it off your belt, flip it open, and you can speak. Hello. We have located the computer system. Uh, apparently. It is here to care for the Varai and needs someone else to take over. However, it refuses to speak with us further until everyone is gathered. Yeah, yeah we've also found something as well. It's um, sub subspace antenna. Uh, seems to be broadcasting uh, the same signal. Uh, nothing, much, nothing much aside from that. I assume you want us there. Everything's overgrown yes. here. As well. Huh. This place it's should be cleaned time. sometime. Yes. Okay. We'll meet up shortly. So. <coughs> you head... I'm assuming you're heading down to the captain immediately. Yes. I, I would be. I'm, follow, I'm following... Uh, <laughs> Westacre. Okay. So. You meet up, you climb down the shaft. I won't make you roll against the climbing. You get down and you can see the captain and Robin standing there. And ahead of you, the, f com the wall ahead of you is the computer. All the moving parts, all the disks, everything turning, everything blinking is there. I, li I like it. Hmm, I don't trust it. Uh, 
So you're gonna speak up now, pal? Say that in character. Pal. Yes. The so Arclo responds with The discussion may only continue once we are all gathered. Who is we? And uh, at that point, it said, so at that point, we cut over back to the pathos. Mm. <laughs> so remind me again, who is on the pathos? Which char- which characters? I am Devaya Drenlich Twosser. Okay, and also Nero Backfire Jeff. Correct. In this one. Yes. Yep. Okay. Also, strange thing. For me, uh, in, in the characters in Roll20, I've also got Tom Robin as well as Yali Kusin. Because they are supporting characters. Yes. These supporting characters, oh, it's a pool oh, yeah, for of the course. entire time. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> right, so who has, who, yeah, has, so who has the helm? Who, I mean, who's, who's got the, the con? Who's, who's in charge on the bridge? It would be, yeah, it, it would be oh. Nero because he's a lieutenant and Divide Renich Twasik is lieutenant junior grade. Yes, that was yes. what we had. Uh, yes, I remember now. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. As you're sitting on the bridge, and you can look up the reference material in, in oh. on Discord of what that looks like, the bridge. Mm-hmm. And all the beeping going on, the rhythmic beeping all the, around you. As... So... One moment. Yeah, as... <coughs> you can hear the ensign who is at science, sensors, turn to you and says, Sir, there's another ship in orbit. It's the Klingons. And that's when we cut to the intro. Uh. <laughs> that's when we cut to the intro. So, space, the final frontier. Yeah. Is it the same intro? I don't know, we haven't come up with one yet. Uh. We should do. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. Right. After a... Actually, hold on, to make this a bit more... Uh, Really, uh, I'm going to switch over to this screen uh, for the intro. The intro is running. It is running. It is running. Like, what's the screen? It's just a normal ready screen. Oh yeah, okay. And then we're going to switch back, and we're coming back, switching back to the <laughs> pathos bridge, and the the scene again. It's like, sir, I've got another ship on sensors. It's the Klingons. Or dun dun dun. Exactly. <laughs> Am I on the bridge? <laughs> Okay, okay, right. Neo has probably got his feet up on the what's it, probably relaxing, and goes, and then go, literally jumps up and goes, what? Are you sure? I'm on the, bri- I'm on the bridge, right? Yes, your comms. <clears throat> right. <laughs> could, I, <clears throat> could I contact the captain oh. on the planet? You can try, but it's going to be a check. So, <laughs> this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hold up, are you sure it's the uh, Klingons? Says... Oh, damn it. Yes! It is definitely a oh, Klingon God transporter. Transponder. They are... They are, an int- they, are, they are on an intercept course. Oh, lovely. The captain just happens to go... God damn it. Okay, so... Can you remember? Can you okay, I'm, call again? <laughs> I'm, call, I'm no, calling the captain. Part, the... <laughs> okay, so you want to call the captain? Yes. Okay. Just so that she knows what's going on up here. Okay, so let's see. This is going to be a an engineering plus control check. Sure. <laughs> and it is a base difficulty of one, however... Threat? Yes. Thought so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to spend a little bit of threat. How much do we have, actually? Because there's a counter. Momentum, we have six. A threat. No, uh, no, no, no. Why is that threat counter then? I don't know why. You're not supposed to know. Okay, sure. So, I've spent a little bit more threat to increase the difficulty from one to three. Okay. There's lots of interference going on. I've got some space communications. Yes, the focus does apply. Great. Interference, because they're underground. They are within this structure, and the atmosphere, the strange orange orange atmosphere, which was never investigated, is also causing a little bit more interference. So... Would the ship assist? The ship would assist, yes. With its... Ship uh, would, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Being as the ship, being as the ship would assist, I suggest that you only buy one die. We are at maximum momentum. All right. However, you may need it. We sure are. Sure. I'll actually technically one would have evaporated because we switched over oh. to. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll, but no, no, it's fine. I'm gonna let you keep it for now because it's 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 the same thing. Okay, I'll buy I'll buy a die. I'll buy one die, please. One die. Okay, thank you for your speaking purchase. Speaking of which, uh, speaking of which, DM, um, I'll be back in a bit. Okay. Sure. Sure. Right. So Willis has uh, an interesting message. He says uh, they're on an intercept like course. It. Raise shields. That's what he says. Oh. Duh. What do you say? Do you want to do that? <laughs> okay, you're going to yellow alert. So on the, on the captain's chair, there's a little button you press down on the armrest, and you you say, "All hands, yellow alert." I'll press the captain's chair and then press the uh, button because I won't be on the actual captain's chair. Three successes. Okay, ooh, so you just manage it. It's a very staticky connection, but you manage it. Robin the cowardly merchant is in chat. What is this? Hello. Hello. Your namesake is in the game as well. <laughs> so. Yes. Right. You, you can't see me today because yeah, there's tangos, still issues. Tangos. Yeah. Discord. Otherwise, I'd have it up. Right. So. You do get through the captain. So, captain, your Good. communicator, which is on your belt, is beeping. Captain here. Captain, are you alright? It is a staticky connection. But you can hear them clearly. Are you all alright down there? There are Cleons, just enter the system. We are safe. Great. Uh, Cleons, just enter the system. They're in on intercept cars, just want to let you know what's going on up here. <coughs> uh, everything was calm beforehand though. Uh, we have been informed that we are awaiting someone. Uh, if you are not already, go to yellow alert and stand by to see if they are hostile. Yeah, we just went to yellow alert. Ah, uh, yes, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a look. Good. Okay, good luck down there, Captain. And uh, to the rest of the team as well. Oh, no, that's bad. Yeah. Um, might I advise you to maintain the comms connection? All right. All right, I'll leave it up. Good, good advice, Captain. Okay, that's actually something that they only God. so rarely do in the shows. True. <laughs> God, God. I would have cancelled as well. Uh -huh. Okay. So, welcome back, Mr. W. Yes, I heard the door. <laughs> Hello, Mr. W. Welcome, welcome back. back. Right. I didn't. I, thought, oh, I, I could have sworn I'd muted. No, we heard the the door. No. We heard it squeaking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stop it then. Luckily, you didn't swear. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I, I've sworn on streams before. I can get books out. There. Okay. <laughs> right. So, as you're on the bridge, so uh, actually, Rogue, are you at helm or are you sitting in the captain's chair? At helm. Helm. Okay. Yeah. So you can see on your navigation, you've got that dish shape thing on on to your right below you. You can see it on on the Discord. Yeah. Hold on. Discord uh, where? I, I can't see yeah. Discord. One moment. Mm -hmm. I'll reply to it. This one. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, that that one. Okay. Mm. Yes, which is a sensor readout. And on that. I'll actually, I'll post. Oh, Discord works for me now. Oh, it does. I've just tried it again. Wow. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so, I shall come this is into what voice I was talking chat. about. Language, Mr. W. <laughs> so, uh, can I have the headphones? Uh, no, you can't have them back. Mm. <laughs> no, no, you you can't have them back. No. There you go. Have Thanks. them back. <laughs> right. Oh, that's quite dark. Hold on. Uh, no, yes, no, yes. Ah, light! Right. <laughs> right. Hello, finally. Hello. There he is. We're all here. Hello. Okay, so, yes. you can see on that display, a little beep, a little blob, getting closer and closer and closer as mm -hmm. it is approaching planetary orbit. As it is entering orbit, 
you can see that they apparently are running with their shields and weapon systems offline. Mm -hmm. And hold on, looking at player names. <laughs> uh, and Dovaya, Drainlich Twazak, yes. you're being hailed. Alright, acting captain, they're healing us. Respond. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably right. diplomatically pending. Okay, on screen. Alright, I'll put it on screen. Okay, on beep, screen. Beep, beep, beep. Yes. Okay. Right. On screen comes a Klingon. T TOS era, so looking vaguely Asian, a little bit, uh, but uh, wearing the gold uh, chain mail. And I'll I'll just link the picture as well, so you can you can see what I'm roughly talking about. Uh, in it's it's on in reference material anyway, but I'll yes. post it to you. Yeah. Our little teaser from mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Thumbs up. And he says, "Greetings, Earthship." This is Captain Korj of the Mojtuk. Welcome to the system. Uh, hi, um, hello. <laughs> uh, hold on. <laughs> My brain. Oh. Uh, acting Captain. Neo Jeff. What brings you out here? We are investigating the strange phenomenon which you, I'm assuming, are also investigating. Our governments have allowed both our ships to enter the neutral zone. I can assure you we are not looking for a fight. As he says that, there's a close-up of his face, and the eyes lit, like, the face is quite dark, but the eyes lit in that very 60s dramatic lighting. Ominous. Very ominous. There is a temple under the hill of the settlement, uh, where a computer is waiting for another party. Okay, so, uh, to do that, to, to speak over the system like that, and then over the other communications as well, that is going to be an advantage. So it is going to take two momentum because the connection is quite staticky and that for, for that to be picked up for the other thing while you're down there we've got five momentum if you would like to spend two you can do this so then you can converse with them as though you were on the bridge but otherwise it's i think so how does everyone else feel yeah sure sure it's yeah, important for the captain to be able to speak to the thing on wouldn't it what why, why wouldn't it be a role though because no, because no, this this is an advantage. The the connection's already been established, and this is going to with the captain being able to speak with the Klingons as though they were face to face, basically, oh, yeah. is an advantage that you would have, which you need would need to pay for with momentum. So anybody against this transaction? Three, no, no two, one. Okay, we're now at three momentum. So, yes, you can talk with the Klingons if you would like to. All right, <clears throat> then I say what I said before. Okay. Which I only half remember. Could you please repeat it because I'm not sure that I remember. Um, uh, there's a temple uh, hmm. under the hill of the settlement uh, there's a computer waiting for another party, something like that. Okay. <clears throat> the Klingon responds with... Interesting. You have people on the surface, then? Yes. I'm assuming that I'm speaking with the captain of this Earth vessel. That is correct, Captain Sheehan. 
We shall be sending our own landing party momentarily. Await our arrival. And they cut the call. Yeah. They cut the call. <laughs> mm. Right. Okay. That wow. be good. It can't be good. Yes. Good, good. Should we keep the shields up or do you wanna put them down? Keep them up just in case. Okie dokie, we'll do. Okay, so. After another while, we'll go back down to <coughs> the planet's surface. Mm -hmm. One momentum evaporates. And as you're in this computer room chamber, you start to hear footsteps coming along the corridor that you've come from. Into the room, going past, mm -hmm. through, through the vines, emerge two Klingon officers. And they seem to be looking around. They've got weapons drawn, looking around disruptors, but they're not pointing them at you. That's good. So, what would you like to say? Who? Anybody who's down here? I'm very loud. Um, yes, was. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you shout? Uh, <laughs> is, that, yeah. is that what you shout? <laughs> yeah? Okay. Oh, God damn it. So, you shout that? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Captain Shun of the USS Pathos here. Yes. Yes, we saw your ship in orbit. It was quite hard to miss. He then says, You, looking at the computer, I'm assuming are the leader of these people. They spoke very highly of you. And then Arklo responds with, I am their guardian. Now that both parties are represented, we can commence. Does anyone want to say anything? Commence what? <laughs> oh, bloody time. He probably did call the ship fat. He probably did. And that's why he punched himself. <laughs> no, no. Actually, no, he probably would have. Um, so, our And is, what hmm? would you have us do? There's... The situation will be disclosed. I am the guardian of the Vurai. However, I am failing. I must be replaced. Failing? The duty of care must be transferred. Mm -hmm. Huh. And who or what exactly are you hoping to replace you in the best circumstances? Can't anyone repair you? Yes. I am beyond repair. Uh -huh. The duty of care will be transferred to one of you. The Klingon Empire or the United Federation of Planets. You will debate. Does your creator not to live anymore? Yes. You will debate. Um, not I'm not sure what I'm All right. Um, what, what are like the regulations for control of planets within the neutral zone? Well, good that you asked. Are, are you asking the Klingon yeah. captain or? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Okay, so... Me up a bit on Starfleet. Well, no, because they wouldn't even ask. They would well. <laughs> so, the thing is that if there is a 
a uh, culture on a world within the neutral zone, they, well, they have three options really. Either they could remain independent, which the Cleons may or may not uh, want to go along with, uh, <laughs> or if they ally themselves with the Federation, then that system will, basically the, the neutral zone will be pushed either way so that this system will be included either in Federation space or in Klingon space. Now, this system is in quite a strategic place. It is... If the Klingons were to gain this system, then several... Well, the outposts would be... Two outposts would be cut off from each other. You would have to go around this entire system and the space around it to get between them. Additionally, it would disrupt trade routes, adding on another few days to, uh, to uh, vessels trading. The Cleons, however, for them this would be quite advantageous. Uh, so I'm guessing we're only trying to get it to stop them getting it by the sounds of it. Well, that is one I... thing. However, it is also a question of what is going to be best for the Wurai. Yes, which is, eh? <laughs> um, how, how much do we know about how the Klingons treat their their colony planets? Not that in this much. Time? You know that there is slavery. You know that there is slavery within the Empire, but you don't have a lot of details. Mm. The this is Cold War, USA, Russia. So, mm. a lot of it is probably propaganda. However, it may not be. Okay. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, dear. Hmm. No, you've not found any hmm. quadrupedal life forms on this planet yet. Damn. Ha. Uh, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> Um, how, like, how diplomatic have the Klingons been known to be? <laughs> not very, not, not very if... In this time rogues, period? Uh, rogues, rogues are the, not, not very if rogues are the character with any indication. Hey! Come on, how diplomatic have the Klingons been known to be? Well... What's the question of the DM? They can be, but... They are not known for being diplomatic, generally. At least not the military. Uh, well, I mean, we both want it. And um, exactly... I think Captain Shun... Uh, Captain Shun would be very good at this. But needs some background information. Okay, so what would you I like would to know? address the computer. Mm -hmm. um, were your creators of this planet? Says negative. Is any relative of your creator still alive? Unknown. Hmm. When did you last speak to your creator? Before the departure of what? Departure of what? Departure of Arklo. I thought what you were Arklo. were the physical characteristics of your creators? At this point the Klingon captain brings up a pilgrimage. So, com uh, Captain <laughs> Korj uh, steps in and he says, Arklo, these questions are irrelevant. They're only delaying. These Federation... On the contrary. These Federation diplomats are known for their political mind games during debates. Yes. On the contrary, I am attempting to establish 
whether or not mm. there is any ground for a prior claim, whether this place was previously occupied by Klingons or Federation members. So shut your trap and let no. it work. This planet, I, well, it, it was, uh, this system was uncharted. This is the first time a Federation vessel has visited here, and there are no signs of previous Klingon habitation or anything in this system. And the physical characteristics of the creators? The physical characteristics? Um, Does a paper print out? out? No, it says that they, that they, look, <laughs> that they looked similar physically to you. When you say you, Westaker specifically, or you is us? very big. He, yeah, I was say, yeah. Arklo just says that they physically resembled you. Hmm. Well, okay. you as in the What's collective, the... or you as in the individual. I, I think that's the point. He's not telling us. I, I think that's yeah. the point. Uh, I don't think the DM's telling us. Or it's just computer me. logic, not specifying. Okay. Well, you ask more specifically, and he says, uh, collectively. Oh right. So a little band of mis so a little mm -hmm. band of misfits then. Hmm. So basically, it's a group of mixed humanoids. Yes. And theoretically, whoever gets it, tech's gonna jump horrendous. The Klingon captain then says. Right. Oh, Arklo. I willingly am going to let the Federation representatives present their arguments first so that you can see their tricks they play. Please, Captain. Go ahead. I take a step back. I take a step back from it. <laughs> okay. Popcorn. <laughs> Arklo, would you please outline the nature of the care the Vurai will be requiring? They do not have capability to sustain themselves. They require shelter, sustenance, protection. Now like words typing. they'll jump from the much typing. <laughs> so in other words they'll jump from the uh, stone age to uh, let's say now very quickly. Explain Well basically the uh. tech. <clears throat> I don't quite know what you mean. In the nature of fairness, we are huh? both space-faring cultures. Uh, there would be the potential for growth either way. Mm. Yeah. I, oh, I really want to say something, but it could bugger this all up. No, by all means, say it. So don't. Uh, <laughs> so don't. <laughs> Temp well, I'm, te I'm tempted. I'm tempted to bring because you said that there was. Uh, Rumors of slavery in the Klingon uh, quarters, and you said it, and you said it would mess up trade routes. I'm so tempted to bring that up as a reason why they shouldn't have it. Just blanketly say it. No, just go ahead. If you want to, you can say it. Yeah, as long as it fits with the character, sure. It, well, it would. Yeah. Fake, yeah. But I think he. I think he's also smart enough to know that but, it wouldn't. Well, it, it would. It would be a valid point to bring up. Yes. Robin. Robin, the cowardly merchant, wants you to say it. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Unsurprising. <laughs> it's not really, because I'll be the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and another point. Uh, we ain't been accused of slavery. The Klingon captain raises an eyebrow at that. But he doesn't, but he doesn't respond. I like smirk and like to a sort of... Like a, like a little shrug. Okay. 
And of course, well, a bit more selfishly, it would bugger up trade routes if, if you got it. I don't think that is of the computer's concern. That being well, said, there are troubling, there are indeed troubling rumors, um, and, uh, conclusions which have been drawn regarding the treatment of colonies by the, their Klingon, um, oh god, I can't think of words. I'm not going to talk right now. Um, uh, overlords, Gotham. perhaps? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to, I want to... <laughs> I would like to say it more diplomatic. What's a more diplomatic way of I don't saying know. overlord? <laughs> How about con uh, under Klingon control, perhaps? All right. Uh... So we. Sus sus I was. I was typing. Leave me alone. Um... <laughs> It's fine, don't worry about it. You can type all you want to. Yeah. I, I already have. <laughs> um, we suspect that these colonies have had their peoples um, made into servants of the Klingon Empire potentially against their will and potentially under poor conditions. And while we do not have clear-cut evidence, this is a concern which I believe you should consider. Okay. Arklo, uh, Arklo then says, you have made arguments why the Klingon Empire should not receive custody. What are your arguments why the Federation should? Surely, well, surely because we won't do any of the things that the others may, might do. I mean, no, you only have to, but come on, have a heart. The Federation has a long and established history of aiding developing cultures uh, while also respecting their their own needs and their own uh no words 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 um, it's okay take your time uh aiding them in developing in their own way so they can be self-sufficient or a part of the federation okay says are your arguments complete? There's a silence. And so... I shrug. And so the <laughs> Klingon captain then says... Uh, yeah. The Klingon captain says, Very well. I believe it is now time for the Klingon Empire to speak up against these outrageous accusations. Firstly, I shall endeavour to counter these accusations. Foremost, slavery. It is a complicated thing. When we, the Cleon Empire, is forced to use abhorrent violence to take over control of a world when they resist when they <coughs> fight then our lives are lost our resources wasted and so this resistance this culture are merely repaying a debt to society once this debt has been repaid they become citizens of the empire with all of the rights that that entails it is a quite effective way of convincing annexed or potentially annexed worlds to surrender peacefully. You see, we do not want violence. We do not want the fight. But if we need to, we are prepared to do so. The second point is... Can I... The second point is that this captain has made the point 
that the Federation supposedly respects the traditions and cultures of their subject worlds. However, we have evidence of the contrary. Their Federation is a mixture of cultures and beliefs that are so blended together that each one of them loses their individuality. The Federation may speak words of peace, but they are actually insidious. If you entrust the Vurai to the Federation, then it would spell doom for their own culture. Contact would be made, their ambassadors would come to this world, and they would contaminate this culture. It is inevitable. Whereas the Klingon representatives would provide no more than basic survival needs, if that is requested. Hey, if the laptop asks us not to have contact with anyone, I'm sure we'll be okay with not making contact with anyone. He says, he, he looks over to you and he says, see what I mean? Diplomatic games. We have allowed them to speak their piece without interruption, and they interrupt us. Get finished. I apologize on the behalf of my first officer. We did not intend to be rude. Again, the clean captain raises again, an eyebrow. Again, I just... Okay. Then he says, Additionally, the Klingon Empire is in a much better state to provide protection for this world. As I'm sure you are aware, there are hostilities between the two powers. And a war is potentially on the horizon always. If you ally with the Federation, then this world in a war would be crushed. The Federation simply does not have the resources or the ships to protect a world that is not one of its colonies in a war. Whereas the Klingon Empire has far more ships, especially in this area. One of our main shipyards is only a few light years away. This world would automatically be under our protection. Far better than the Federation could ever manage. It is your turn, Captain. Very well. I suppose I shall address your statements in order. To begin, as a Vulcan, I can say that my culture was brought into the Federation, which is predominantly human, and my people have maintained our culture and traditions on our home world and others we have colonized. I do not believe that your world would be in any more danger than ours. Additionally, while the Klingons claim they can protect your planet, I also do not see why a non-combative planet would be in danger during a war. Unless, of course, the other side is threatening them, which the Federation is not in the habit of doing. So, unless the Klingons are suggesting that they would attack you during a war, I don't see why either of us should be better than the other, even discounting any <laughs> beliefs regarding our relative strengths. At that, I, at that I sort of... Um... I sort of glance at the captain and like tap my head as if to say like well done, not really. Okay. Rogue and Kango, do you have anything to add? No. Nope. I just nod along. Okay. With, cap with our captain. Well, I will just put officially that again. If you don't, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, of course, I can't speak for the higher ups, but I'm sure that if you explicitly tell us to keep the rest of our cultures out of here, then I'm sure there'll be no issue with that. Okay. The Cleon captain then speaks up again, and he says, Arklo, do not believe her lies. Although she is Vulcan, she has a history of 
Never mind. Vulcan other captains, lie. other captains of the Federation speak against her words. Simply look at the history of James T. Kirk, his involvement with countless civilizations, contamination, everywhere he steps, his ship blindly stumbling into any situation. I assure you, the Klingon Empire is much more reliable. Additionally, the point of this planet becoming a contested zone is it would be a foolish lie to say that this world would not be strategic in a war. It very much is. And I believe that it is fair to say that when it comes to survival, to war, both our leaders would not hesitate to use this strategic place for all of its worth. It is simply a matter of who can protect it better. Right, so what would you like to say to that? Well, theoretically speaking, Vulcans can't lie, or don't usually lie. But they never lie, if I remember rightly. I, I think it's that they do have emotions, but they've just just almost completely compressed them. It is a it is highly against um, the Vulcan values to speak lies. However. I understand that you cannot assume that to be true, as you have no prior experience with us. So... Um. The strategic value of this location is undeniable. However, the strategic value is in the ability to pass through safely, not to control its inhabitants. <clears throat> I believe any disputes should be, should remain in space, not on your planet, as the Klingons seem to be suggesting. Do you give the word back to the Klingons? Yes. Okay. But well, where's computer's microphone? <laughs> uh, it's above there. <laughs> <laughs> Arcus <laughs> microphone. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, so so it's not cold. <clears throat> no. Okay. What say you? The Klingon <laughs> captain responds and he says, "It is foolish to assume that a battle in orbit would not have effects on the surface." To blockade this system, as you said, the value is in transit, to blockade this system would be of great value to either faction. And if we, or the Federation, wanted to hold this system and a battle broke out, imagine what an antimatter core explosion could do to this world's atmosphere. Any debris. If a battle broke out in orbit, and I mean a real battle, then this world is not safe. And so, this world's safety hinges on the fact that the power who controls it can defend it to such a degree that the other power would not even attempt to take it. And I'm sure that if you use your sensors, look into orbit, the Earth ship has constantly been running under yellow alert with shields raised for fear that we might attack. 
That alone should speak what volumes about our superiority. How would you like to respond? One, you're assuming there's going to be a battle. Or war. And two, you're assuming that it'll be around here. Now. Willis has some interesting points in chat. Uh, I haven't read chat in a bit. I've been. He's uh, just at the bottom. Um, at the bottom, his last couple of messages. Not even got it open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, single combat is not this captain's specialty. Oh gosh. Oh. Th this captain has a <laughs> diplomatic background. Well, the message above that. Not, not a combat one. Um. Uh, it's, um, it's not a Saturday game, which where the captain does have combat background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I do believe that our shields being raised while the Klingons are not indicates not that we are afraid, but more so that we are appropriately cautious and protective of ourselves in situations where we are in the presence of a potential threat. I believe defense is just as important, if not more so, than offensive power, as the defense of your planet would prevent you from being harmed in the case of a battle. We have the means to provide such protection. Okay. <laughs> also. What's the Cleon captain's name again? The Cleon captain's name is Captain Korj, so K O R J. Okay, and we are in Federation space, right? No, you're in the neutral zone. All right, inside. Okay, inside, yes. Also, did we do we know if the Cleons also have raised and their the shields? This is even a conversation that is happening. Mm -hmm. They True. they have yeah. not they <laughs> have sense. not raised their shields or armed their weapons. All right. Okay. Mm. Sure. So, the captain speaks up again, and he says, It is a sign of delusional optimism to assume that war between us will not break out. And if it does, then this system's location speaks for itself. To address your other point, I would like to bring up the incident at Organia. A dilithium rich world. We were there first. We had spoken with the locals who had openly invited us to their world. We were prepared to peacefully extract dilithium and repay them fairly and then the enterprise showed up they attempted to through subterfuge and trickery to take over this world the natives did not want them there and yet they persisted they were the ones who incited violence they were the ones who attempted to start a rebellion. They forced the crews of the Klingon vessels in orbit to take drastic actions to protect what was already agreed to be theirs. The same thing could happen here. So you're basing everything off a crazy cat, if I... A crazy um, rogue captain, really, to be honest. 
One captain's actions does not represent the entire federation captain's actions. At this point, Arklo says. Uh, how much? At this at this point, Arklo says, this point is negative. You are representing your factions. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, how much would our characters know about that incident? Probably quite a bit. So let me exposit. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. Here yes. we go. <laughs> uh, this is actually an episode. It's called "Errand of Mercy," and basically, the Enterprise shows up to this very strategically important world, uh, only to to basically claim it for the Federation to make contact to say, "Okay, you you work with the Federation now, okay? Not with the Klingons, right?" They show up, find out the Klingons are already there. So. Yes, the locals say, okay, no, we don't want you here, please leave, please leave. Kirk and friends <laughs> think that, well, the Klingons are oppressing these, these completely defenseless people and they must defend them against the Klingons. And so they went down in disguises to try to talk with the government there and then when the Klingons found out about what's going on there, they were then getting to more and more drastic measures and the the Kirk and, and friends were trying to organize the Organians to defend themselves and to blow up ammunition stores and do all these things and uh, yes so these yes and it, it was escalating more and more and more and it got to the point where Kirk and the other uh, Klingon commander were arguing about, yes, yeah, there's, there's going, to, going to be a war and the, the Klingons are going to beat the Federation. No, the Federation are going to beat the Klingons and this whole thing. And the Organians then stepped in because as it turns out, they were highly evolved energy beings who were completely immune to anything that either side could do. Yeah. And they basically stopped both armies in their tracks. Well, if you try to fire a phaser at, yeah. if, a, if, the, if a Cleon tried to fire a disruptor at a federa Federation officer, the disruptor would instantly get so hot that they'd have to drop it. They stopped the fighting, then and there. And it was actually a really good scene because Kirk was then starting to defend his right to wage war, but the Organians stepped in and said, what are you defending? You're defending the right to kill billions of innocents, to wage war, to do all of this, and then Kirk catching himself in that and such the, the Organian peace treaty was signed, establishing the neutral zone. And the armies have not been able to engage each other. However, there have been a few instances where individual ships have fought each other. So that is basically the story, if I'm remembering it correctly, which I think I am. As I said, you're basing mm -hmm. your argument on one rogue, crazy rogue captain of a ship. <clears throat> not mm. the whole... Theory. So, the, for the other Klingon, who has not said anything so far, he looks like he's a little bit younger than the, the captain, probably his uh, second in co command. Um, he very angrily steps forward and he, he says, Federation lies. Kirk was under the orders of the Federation. He was not acting rogue. He was acting under orders. And the captain kind of pulls him back and says, I apologize for the outbreak of my officer. And was he? However, he does have a valid point. I assume we would know. But, uh, uh, I assume we would know if Kirk was. Um, if this is true. Mm hmm. He was. Mm. How much of it was ordered? Well, that's going to be an advantage. <laughs> well, mm. do you want us? We've only got two momentum. Only we've got two. Mm. 
What are we thinking? I'd be fine with it, but it's also up to the others. Yeah, I think we should do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I think we should do it. Yeah, I'd say it's important. All right. Okay. Right. So you've got, I've got no momentum left. Mm. Okay. So. We're in uncharted territory here, baby. Kirk. <laughs> Kirk was ordered to secure the planet for Federation, to establish a treaty with them, to make sure that this planet is a strategic resource for the Federation, and definitely not for the Klingons, right? And he was authorized to basically do everything within reason to accomplish this goal. So what he was doing there, and how specifically he chose to go about this, was his own decisions. However, he was acting within the mission parameters, within the directives that he had been given by Federation. Mm. Okay, okay. Formulating, formulating. Yeah, Willis has typed a, a little bit more. Uh, has, has typed out in a, in a in a good way. If you want to look at uh, chat. It is true that the Federation wanted to secure that planet uh, in place of the Klingons. However, it was assumed at that point that the Klingons had not yet made contact. So there were no orders specifically pertaining to that circumstance. circumstance. Therefore, without specific orders, Captain Kirk took it upon himself to, as a captain does, uh, determine what is best given the knowledge that he has. Improvise, now, essentially. That's the way His hmm. actions were indeed misguided and did cause a very dangerous escalation on both sides. However, we generally would not use such tactics. Uh, that would cause harm to a planet in retaking it from another force. It is very irresponsible to do so and would be wasteful of life. At this, so, at this point, the Klingon captain just starts laughing. I just nod along to the captain. <laughs> Arklo says, Explain your emotional outburst. To the Klingon captain. <laughs> then he, he kind of catches himself and he says, Apologies. It is just comically pitiful, these attempts at deception. Looking at the pr just the previous six years of Federation history, they have sent out ships on five year missions with the express purpose of making contact with other civilizations, of establishing communications, of creating cultural linkages. These voyages themselves are an attempt at broadening the scope of the Federation in this very manner. Additionally, the exploits of the Enterprise alone show many instances where the crew of that ship has meddled in the cultures of others. There is one specific case where the contamination has happened long, long before the Enterprise even arrived. The planet, a peaceful planet, was made contact there was contact established with a human anthropologist and he decided it fit to turn that culture into resembling one of the most 
hated cultures on Earth. It was only through the actions of the Enterprise that this was somewhat mitigate, mitigated. However, their culture was destroyed. And yes, we are talking about World War II Germany. There is actually an episode. Where, uh, there was, in this episode, yeah, a Federation anthropologist, I think, was, or observer. He was only supposed to observe this culture. He was there for a while. And they were in such big issues that he thought it fit to manipulate the culture to implement the... He only wanted to implement the useful parts of World War II Germany. But then, of course, it ended up doing the entire thing. I mean, even down to the badges and everything. Yes, the only the reason why that episode was made because because the, they didn't have money for costumes and so they just borrowed costumes from other shows which were the uniforms and so they wrote a story around that. <laughs> but <All right. laughs> but it is part of canon. So bloody hell! Wow! Jesus, you weren't lying when you said the Star Trek dealt with well, not moral issues, but I mean. Mm-hmm. Well, well it's called Patterns of Force. I'll I'll post a link to the IMDB page if on Discord as well, well as in, in chat. But, well, for us trying to you know How do they know so much classified Starfleet information? Good point. And all about the Enterprise. It's Enterprise, yeah. Enterprise, Enterprise, Enterprise. Mm. That's one ship. Is well, Starfleet Enterprise? Well, about the <clears throat> ab well, about us. Um, you are being we... glared at. Well, glared at as much as a Vulcan would glare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. Well, so about. <clears throat> Oh, is Arklo going to come in? Or is uh, no, but the captain was going to say something more. I sort of... I, I, I let her go first, just in case she says the thing that I'm No, 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 I meant, I meant the Klingon captain wanted to say something. Well, like he hadn't finished. I didn't realize. No, he, he, he did. He wanted to, to respond to what Rogue had said. Well, <laughs> both <I don't>. eyebrows. <laughs> she, she raises yeah. both eyebrows. Say <laughs> what? Yes, actually, Patterns of Forest, the episode, was not aired in Germany. Even in the 60s, it wasn't aired. Oh. It's even, it, yeah, Ooh. because it was uh, too critical, apparently, or too sensitive a matter. Mm. But anyway, oh, right, so... It, it is available now, yes, but back then, no. So, I mean, it, it only first aired, I think, in the 90s or something like that. Like, really recently. Right, anyway, oh. so... Uh, right, so the Klingon captain st says, Yes, it is only one ship, but Arklo, the Enterprise, is not just any ship. It is the flagship of the entire Federation fleet. It is the ship that is embodying what the Federation is about. And Kirk has not received any reprimands as far as the Klingon Empire is aware. He is still in charge of the Enterprise, and he is showing no signs of stepping down or being replaced. If anything, our intelligence indicates that he may be promoted to Admiral soon. I bloody hell hope not. <clears throat> if my crew would please be respectful <laughs> in handling the situation. <laughs> is, is, is she looking at a particular member when she says that by any chance? She's skimming. She is skimming. <laughs> Did you need uh, to continue, Captain? No, he didn't want to say anything. Very well. well with you, with you saying about how we, about how first we, officer. Yeah. 
Please wait. <laughs> At this, point, at this point, our close says, you both show exemplary control over your staff. <laughs> wow, slammed by a computer, I never thought that was... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so... In discounting the fact that you have obtained information that you should not have, the fact is that it is accurate. Yes, so commercial I will break. That's allow just it to be represented. However, so far every example you have given uh, displays the Enterprise doing something questionable, and in one case actually reversing some damage that was done by another federation party. officer <laughs> so all the examples you have given of your actions have involved uh, let's see using violent actions to overtake planets forcing them to pay reparations for the loss of your people, even though you were the instigating party, and, of course, reacting to the actions of the Federation by targeting the, uh, the inhabitants of the planet, who were apparently completely peaceful in their interactions with you. So... I do feel hesitant in accepting the idea that your people would treat them well any better than the Enterprise has performed, any better than we have done, any better than the Federation has done in the past with interacting with other civilizations. Because at the end of the day, while you are complaining about us making contact with other uh, civilizations, is that not what we are doing right now? Making contact with another civilization in an effort to gain control of a strategic location, thus expanding our range of control. The captain says, Oh, well done. Well done indeed. Yes, it is what we are doing. This is a peaceful endeavor, at least for the time being. And it would be foolish to ignore the tactical importance of this world. Your arguments are valid. However, this is a debate about with which side the Vurai would be better off. And my arguments based on logic, which I am sure you can appreciate, clearly show that the Klingon Empire would be a better host for them. I would give my word as a Klingon officer and captain of a vessel that the Burai would not be harmed or disturbed in any way other than the care which they seek. If the Federation can promise the same, I would be surprised. The Federation will provide as much aid as the natives desire, no more and no less. And if you believe that the best choice for them is having a hovering fleet who are prone to violent overreactions, then sure, the Klingons would be a better host. However, if you would like them to be protected and hopefully kept out of as much danger as we possibly can, I believe the Federation 
would indeed be a better fit. At this point, Arklo says, Your statements are arguing the same point. A better defense of this world. The logical solution is the power with more ships in the area would be of greater defensive potential. Do you dispute this fact? While the Klingons do have their whatever they said they had in the area, I don't remember, but she it's, it's a shipyard. Um, a shipyard, yes. While they have a shipyard in the area, you are located between two Federation outposts who are armed. As, and as you're saying defend. this, as you're saying this, the Klingon first officer interrupts again and he says, your puny outposts would not stand up to the might of the Klingon Empire. Additionally, we have four in the area. Again, the Klingon captain pulls him back. And this time, he takes out his com communicator. And he speaks to, he speaks to the ship. Which one? Uh, his the Klingon ship. And he oh, says... Yeah. Commander Kuan will be beamed into the detention cell immediately. Claps it closed and the second in command dematerializes. He is beamed away. He says, Apologies. I will make sure that he has better training before his next mission. So what did you want to Sorry, say? I'm, I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> well, hello, Mr. Snipes. Yes, hello, I'm Mr. Snipes. I'm just outli outlining the points, not every word. Well, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm outlining every yeah. word and just typing as you talk. But, you know. Um, so... Nice bit, of, nice bit of jazz scat there. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's what I do. Um <laughs> So VGR he did say training, but at this point you don't know what's happening on board Klingon vessels. It most of it is probably propaganda. Uh, it is quite warm here as well. <laughs> <laughs> Not nearly as warm. She then. laughs yeah. in Floridian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm currently being informed that it is 91 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Uh, so, whatever that means for you, it's hot. Um, also, the sun is intense enough to make you feel like you're baking. Haha, -ha, we're, so we're at night time here. Haha. -ha. Even though on the screen <laughs> it, might not look like, it might not look like it. Yes, there is actually, it is actually it's nighttime. Like... Yes. Hold on, if I just turn off the light for one moment. See, this is what it's actually like here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, quarter, it's quarter to ten here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here as well. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> How would you like to, what, you were about to say something when, when he interrupted you were talking about the outposts, it's between two outposts? Uh, yes. Words have escaped me. 
Um, Hold on, I'll get the net. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I, as the player, am having trouble thinking mm -hmm. of what the best response to that would be. Well, perhaps of the other players... But my character has focuses in Starfleet uh -huh. protocols and persuasion and politicians, mm -hmm. so I feel like she would well, know something what, that would help. What do the other players have? Like, what, what are the other players thinking? You've mostly been quite quiet, mm -hmm. other players. Huh? Mm -hmm. Especially Kango. I'll check, the, my, I'll check my focus eye. Uh, no, I want to do my character. Was it just foci? Okay, yeah. Uh, combat tactics, hand phases, sh um, shipboard tactical systems, infiltration, emergency protocols, and composure. Unless it starts in the shootout, I don't think that hand phases, combat tactics, or emergency <laughs> procedures will work. Yeah. Anthropology. Uh, anthropology. Why... Hey, what? Go ahead. Composure would probably apply, you know, if I did choose to say something. At least to stop myself getting too heated. Mm hmm. Yes. Remind Captain Ab Willis says remind Captain about the neutral zone would supposedly be adjusted so the planet would then be better defended by whoever takes over. That's what Willis says. That is a good point. Because if it wasn't then it would still be in the grey area. And anyone could really take control. Goods are set, yeah. Oh, that's true. 50% humidity. Uh, UV index 9. Right. Yeah, it's about 32. In floor, I think it's about 32. Yeah. Uh, feels like 98, apparently. But anyway. Yes. Um, <laughs> enough about my weather. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, O oh Queen of Florida. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh shit. You know, all weather is my weather and so forth. Uh huh. huh. Alice in Wonderland reference. <laughs> all right. You know, all ways are my ways. But anyway, I don't want to get distracted. We've uh, time limit. <laughs> oh, we can oh, go. Yeah. We can okay. go over time so... a bit. We can go over time a bit. But just. Yeah. So the planet yeah. being better defended by whoever takes over, the problem with that is that, once again, it is offering the exact same thing. If they take over, it becomes better defended by them. If we take over, it becomes better defended by us. Um, so basically, it doesn't matter who takes over. Okay. Arkla, the situation we have, uh, given that the arguments I have provided, uh, to your knowledge, are equivalent in terms of protection, it is indeed the case that the protection would be equivalent, uh, as your inclusion in whichever, uh, either the Federation or the Klingon Empire would change the neutral zone whoever was in control would be able to provide better protection. So the question is how well the people on your planet would be treated and how, um, how well they would be respected. So since the Klingons are prone to being willing to accept collateral damage in protecting what is theirs, in, uh, well, quotation, theirs, <laughs> I do believe that the safety of your people would be more questionable under their control, logically speaking, based on the captain's own words.
Arklo responds, he says, I have been monitoring the development of the Klingon Empire as well as the United Federation of Planets for over 1000 years. I have witnessed the birth of both. While your statements are true, the Klingon Empire does have a better record of protecting their member worlds. The average loss of colonies is 45% lower in the Federation. There's a stutter. There's a stutter. And you can see that there are a few sparks fly. And a few then, dots, like dot, like three dots. No, there, there are there are a few sparks coming off the computer, and then is a moment of silence. The lights go out for a moment. And they come back up, and it says, "Lower in the Klingon Empire." But is that a record of controlling the colony or protecting the people? Because you want us to care for the Varai above all else. The paramount importance is their survival. And now that you're thinking about it, there have been quite a few Federation colonies where a ship has turned up only to find that they've all been killed by something, whether it be a space creature or some form of parasite or radiation or other unknown anomaly. There have been a lot of instances. Because the Federation doesn't have that many ships, they, only can, they can only call on their colonies quite uh, rarely. So sometimes it's months between visits. To be fair, that's only due to the need of good TV. <laughs> True. What? Oh. Because yeah. a drama for the episodes. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, and, and, and most of them are out one ship. <laughs> so, mm. who wants to no, say anything to this? Who wants to respond to that? I'll I'll respond with a que I'll respond with a question. Is the safety of who you call your people, is that your only real uh, requ requ requirement that the person who succeeds you does, or do you have others and the safety is just your priority? The survival of my children is of paramount importance. You know that, you know that's the question. And are there any other uh, things that are important that your successor should seek to keep maintained, for example. The computer, the, the disks move in either directions, things, lights blinking as it's thinking. Mm -hmm. And then it says Everything else is secondary. Okay. Okay. When you okay, give me a few examples of the everything else. Okay. The rights and freedoms of traversal. The connection to the planetary body, the comfort of self-built shelter, the preservation of history, okay, that's the preservation of structures. Okay, that's enough. Okay. Oh, I thought you were going to go one more. <laughs> <laughs> So we, so we. <laughs> Mr. Snipes has a great recommendation in chat. Um, okay. Um, 
Wow. <laughs> You're right, Willis. <laughs> if you've only watched the um the one ship, mm -hmm. not the whole fleet. Right. The argument is on one ship. Mm hmm And only one Well ship. technically not, because that thing with with a planet where the the, the World War Two German uh, culture was deliberately introduced by a Federation officer who was put there to just observe is not part of what the Enterprise crew did. The Enterprise crew showed up to to basically call on them to see how they're doing, and then because it's been years, I think I was thinking it was years since they last had contact, again. Federation ships don't call port that often, uh, each of these things, only to find out that all of this has happened. So that's not the fault of the crew of the Enterprise. Again, uh, 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 what year is Star Trek actually in, and what uh, year of World War... Uh... This year is... the year is... Da, 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 2269. The current year. And <laughs> what year was World well, War? Uh, beginning of the um, four, so beginning of the thirties, so no, no, beginning of the forties, nineteen forties, so around there. Mhm. Were they around there? Time travel. Okay, it's been so World War Two was from nineteen thirty nine to nineteen forty five. Nineteen forty five. Why is this relevant? I'm just saying. <laughs> yes, Aaron of Mercy was 2267. Apparently. I mean, I'm just trusting you here that this is correct. <laughs> so, as everybody's kind of thinking about this situation, the captain steps forward and he says, We have been talking here for a long time. We have made our statements, our arguments. We have fought verbally. However, this does not appear to be reaching any sort of solution. It is therefore that I challenge you for the right to this planet. Uh, I knew this was going to happen. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Surely we should let the laptop over here decide. No, at the end of the day. Do you say that in character? What? Do you say that in character? Yeah. Okay. I've been calling it the laptop. Yeah, I know. It the I know. But yeah. <laughs> What's that? Uh, it's a piece of antique Earth technology which will be invented many years in the future from whence it's made. Anyway, uh... Well, no, sure, hang on, no. I know, oh, I know, I know. How do you know that? I was gonna say, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't anything. Oh, so, gosh. Willis says, neck pinch him! He says, neck pinch him! <laughs> 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 what do you think? What do you think about that? I do have that ability. Yeah. Um... What is the actual... Oh, oh God. <laughs> what are the actual rules of that? I... Do you know? Uh, I use science to attack. It's non-lethal. What is? I think that's about it. What is the, the the difficulty? Like, is there a? Although, actually, no. Okay. I mean, if you wanted to try it, you could have. I mean, you could have a really good line up. Like, you you neck pinch me, falls unconscious, and then you just say, challenge accepted. <laughs> 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 the Vulcan Death Group. I would love yeah, to do yeah. that. I would love to do that. <laughs> do, do you want to that try? Room. Yes. <laughs> oh, you sound very sure of yourself. You sound, okay, sound no, really sure of yourself. Can I say, I'm sorry. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I just say, whilst this is, whilst this is going on, I'm basically, I'm basically talking to Arklo yeah. and saying, you know, 
he was right. This has gone on for a bit for a bit of a while. You, if you want to make your choice at any point, think it over, computerize it, process it, whatever you do, you know. I think we're done here. Feel free to feel free to optimize on your decision. Uh, does Art the first office uh, not feel lucky against the king? Anyway, <laughs> I think actually, Arclo, Arclo, Arclo responds. He says, "The Klingon captain has raised a valid argument." It's not an argument; it's a bad argument. A action being resolved d during this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, wh what am I rolling? Um, so, what is it? normally it would be security uh, plus daring. However, I'm going to so you you can use science for that, and I would I would also allow you to use control in this case, instead of daring. All right. And this is going uh, to be uh, this is going to be a com competed uh, role, an opposed role, opposed role. You can yes. buy dice. However, you will have to do it with threat. Is it really that worth it? I'm gonna say up front, I don't think it is worth it. I think it's hilarious. Yeah, the whole point of it. Mr. Snipes. The whole point of the laptop calling us here was so that it could hear our points and it could, and after hearing our points, it could then decide. Not some Yeah, and it heard it our points and now is saying, eh, the Klingons have a point, you can fight it out. Mm hmm. Mr. Snipes so says, so, so, Mr. Snipes says, should have just gone, he says, should have just gone to the bar. Now it's Hornet season. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, with the Klingons here, it's always going to end up in a fight. Robin, yeah, that's true. Robin the Cowardly Merchant says, ooh, do it, join the dark side. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, you said you were going to do it. Um, so do you want to buy dice? Yeah. Oh boy. How many? Uh... And you don't even need a permission for it. So I don't, I don't think any of my values would work here. Value? Uh, oh right, because oh I see. Well, for determination. Hmm. Like I'm, I'm trying to think of a world where they, where they work. I mean, I could see search, study, solve, to be working because. Clearly, yeah. this is not going to be resolved without some sort of violence, and so the solution would be this is the least violent form that the violence can take. So I can see how that could work. I would like to use that. <laughs> okay, what would you like me to spend your determination for? Um, I'd like the auto crit. Auto crit? Okay, so you've already got two successes. Would you like to buy dice with threat? <laughs> Hmm. I'd want at least one. I'm debating whether or not I want two. Just because I know Go Klingons on. are going to be Buy good two. at this stuff. Buy two. <laughs> I'm getting two. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Take your three threat. Yes, I have. Enjoy. <laughs> I will. <laughs> you will enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Willis and Robin says, "Screw it, get that's three. another three successes." Okay. Okay. So that's so five, five total. successes in total. Okay. Right. Wow. Okay. So. Yes. Well. I'm going to spend one of that those threats to buy an additional die. So that is 3d20. Let's see how they go. Uh, okay. How many is that? That's a okay. one. Uh, that is, uh, okay. That is four successes. <laughs> oh, thank God. So, <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Right. So. It way when. As this is going on, as... 
<sighs> oh, okay. Hold on. <sighs> right. So, as Yarly Gwissom mm -hmm. and uh, to uh, Tom Robin are talking with Arklo, Shiyun... And, and, and yes? me, I think. And you. you. Oh yes, of course, you were talking. Joseph Westaker. Yes, Joseph Westaker. As you were talking, as you're talking with Arklo, the ca Captain Shiyun takes one very elegant, methodical step forward towards the captain, reaches over to his shoulder, and there is an instant of, of, where, of real, a moment of realization of the captain as he's opening his mouth about to say something, but he collapses unconscious. What would you like to say? I believe the argument is over, if you would like to make your decision. Okay! <laughs> well, uh, well done. I clap. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, God! Uh, wow. Well, okay! Uh, right? <laughs> so, Ar that ended quickly. <laughs> so, Arclo, Arclo says... I think I think the phrase, well, that escalated quickly, would better much apply here. Okay. So Arclo responds. That ended quickly. Arclo responds, and he says, well, I say he, it says. Yes. Your arguments have been made. You have demonstrated the superior tactical intellect custody of this world has hereby been transferred to the United Federation of Planets. <laughs> I shall be expecting your delegates. There we are! The you did it! You did it! Yay. Well done! Yeah, bike. Well done, everybody! Uh, how would that have been to, a, uh, to, a, to an episode of... So, the situation, however, yes. is not completely resolved yet. Oh. Hold on, why are my face yes. cams... Hold on, why are the face mm. cams stuck? You can still hear me, yeah. correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can hear you. That's all, the face cams are... Oh no, now they're good, now they're fine, now they're fine. Anyway, sorry, the situation has not been resolved uh, I think completely. Enough. I think it wants to go to sleep. So, yeah. what uh, do you want to do now? No, this... Well, mine slept a few mm -hmm. an hour ago. Yes? Okay. Yes, everything's okay. Everything's okay. I okay. can't hear anyone. Well... Nobody's oh. speaking. Oh. There we go. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah? Okay. Hello, 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 um, hello. Mm. Yes. So, um, comms are still open, correct? Yes. Yeah, I've not shut yeah. the down. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cap, uh, yeah, we heard the whole thing. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, damn, did you, uh, did you have to edit that quick? Yes. Okay. Well, that's one way of doing it. At this uh, point... Please uh, send okay. communi... No, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> uh, please inform Starfleet and the nearest outposts of the development uh, so that aid can be sent over and do inform the Klingon ship that their captain will be beamed back shortly. <laughs> Water cap. Okay. So, Kango, what message exactly do you transmit to the Klingon vessel? Go oh, F yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, watch your tongue. Okay, Red Alert chills up. They're priming disruptors. They're <laughs> no, 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 no. What? What are you? You've been ordered to send them. You may inform sure. them, but you can come up with yes. it yourself. Okay, I'll just tell them wording. that. Hmm. Hmm. Your, your orders are to tell them that their settled. captain will be beamed back shortly. Okay. You are welcome to paraphrase. But that is the information you have been ordered to get. Yeah. Sure. Willis, Willis, Willis <laughs> says, tell the Klingon ship to beam up their sleeping commander and get out of Federation space. 
<laughs> and there might be too much interference to beam him up from here. Um, we'll, we'll take him uh, to the surface yeah, first. Yeah, take him up to, to the yeah. surface. Okay, I'm assuming that that's, that's happening I'll, during... I'll, I'll just tell them that yeah. their, that they can their highest their in command, command on the ship will be beamed up to their ship soon. Or they need to collect them. Okay, do you want to explain why he's unconscious, or do you just want to leave that a surprise? <laughs> I don't think inviting them down to the planet is the best idea. We'll beam him up. Okay. The uh, dispute yeah. isn't settled. That's why. <laughs> so he's always taking a nap because the dispute has been settled. <laughs> <laughs> he will beam up when he finishes his nap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sure. I need, yeah, I, need to know, I need to know exactly what the message is to determine how they will respond. Makes sense. Okay, I'll tell them. Please don't cover your, the, your, yeah, okay, your yeah, mouth yeah, with your yeah, speaker okay. microphone. Thank you. Yes. Hmm. I'll tell them. Well, so we did hear everything. I did hear everything that was said, right? Since the communications were yes, still yes. open. Okay. You may also want to mention, like, your captain uh, lost... Uh, in a duel for control of the planet, uh, he will be returned yeah. to you. That's, yeah, go, sure. Or something <coughs> along those lines. Yes, I'll say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that. Yeah, I see that part, and that he will, that he will, he will be brought to the surface to be able to be beamed to their ship. Okay. And that's all I say. They acknowledge your uh, communication. Great. And yes, so <laughs> <laughs> back down to back down to the planet. Your is there anything <laughs> <are that. laughs> is there anything you would you would like to say to Arklo before you leave the room? Anything you'd like to ask him perhaps? What do you? Hang on. Actually, Could you? Did, did we get a name for? Did we get a name for this planet? Well, it's already got. It's already got a, a title. It is. Uh, it is called, A S N O A C S dash four eighteen four. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, I'll ask him. I'll ask him. Oh, it. So. <laughs> Mr. Snipes. A name for this place. Sorry, Mr. Snipes. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Mr. Snipes has a very important question. He says you should ask him, is Santa real? But no, sorry, what were you going to say? <laughs> I, was, uh, I, was go- I was going to say... Um, so, do you, so, do, so, do you have a name for this planet? The destination of the journey is called and then it thinks around translating I believe the closest approximation would be in Federation standard English the word Eve of course it is of course of course, it's Eve. Of course it is it has to be Yes. Yes. What are you doing? The doctor just goes. Um. So the captain says. Uh, I think we'll just is... stick with our designation. <laughs> 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 if you could. Um, Grant us access to all your records on the Verai over the years so we can best take care of their needs. We would appreciate that. And we will remain in orbit until further assistance arrives. Affirmative. Transmission will begin as soon as you have returned to your vessel. Very well then. The lights go out again for a moment and then come back on the few sparks flying. I think this is on its way out. Majorly on its way out. Yeah. So, so yes. let's hurry back to the surface yes. and get so that does, information. Does everyone okay. say something to the to so, Arlo or 
It's up to you. If you want to say something, you can say something now. I say. Chance. Your word is in good day. hands, Arclo. Let's off pat it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Arclo responds with This is correct. The debate has clearly shown this to be true. I go out. Okay, and we're actually, okay, we're going to then cut <laughs> to you. Uh, <laughs> we're going to cut to you uh, carrying the sleeping Klingon captain out of the mouth of this, this temple this, with the stone bricks in the middle of the forest. Oh, yeah. And we're completely mm-hmm. going to gloss over how you got him up the shaft. Because in true that, Silas fashion, yes. Yeah, it, we're completely going to gloss over that. That's fine. <laughs> you, you just arrive pull him, carrying him out. Mm-hmm. And there is a crowd of people there. And the old man who was there before comes up to you and he says, Please... Please, enlighten us. What is the verdict? Our captain won. Our people... <laughs> Everyone likes to speak for the captain now. Uh... Sorry. <laughs> Sir. Well, <laughs> captain. Um, our people will be taking care of your needs from here on. Please let us know if you want anything. How will we contact you? Good question. (laughs) We will... (laughs) We will arrange a communications um, interface for you. Uh, We shall ensure you know how to operate it when it is here. Yes. Thank you. You have all of our gratitudes. Please, may your journey among the stars be filled with virtue and with discovery. Right. So, unless anybody else wishes to say something. Uh, This is where a tech jumps a thousand years ahead. (laughs) Perhaps. But then again, the way Arklo speaks about them, they probably were ahead in tech before all this happened. True. Yes. And Willis, hopefully one who doesn't intentionally contaminate their culture. (laughs) (laughs) So, as everybody beams up to their respective ships, you get walk onto the bridge, everybody, and this is where you will would be taking control of your main characters again. If you wish, you can stay yes, controlling your, your supporting characters if you want. I have my main one now. You're all on the bridge. And the... So on... on uh, what's his name? Sorry. On Nero. On Nero's console, you can see that the Klingon ship has broken orbit and is heading back to Klingon space. Would anyone... Well, they're there right now. Yeah. Does anyone have an end coder they would like to say? Well, I say again. That's one way to do it. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just imagining... I mean, you, you can, of course, correct me in this, but the way I'm imagining this is that Mr. W's character says that. And then everybody kind of starts laughing yeah, about that as it's true TOS coda fashion, like ah ha 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 ha. Except, except, yeah, except for the captain who probably just glares. Is this correct, or do you want to correct this, Dodd? No, that sounds about right. Okay. Yes. Right. So that. And, and I kind of look at it, and I kind of look at it like you know I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, the cam- the right. camera yeah. zooms out. A little bit, cuts to an exterior shot of the sh- uh, of the ship with a planet as it's in orbit. As <laughs> the ship is uh, also uh, basically just just fly along, and it cuts, and the end credits roll. So, well, this looks more like my normal notes, where it's oh. <laughs> 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 There we are. <laughs> Nearly three full pages long. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> the usual. 
Uh, so Willis says... Uh, three is average for the other campaign. Mm -hmm. Willis... Uh, sometimes it goes up to five. Yeah. Willis says <laughs> they will leave an, anthro an anthropological slash cultural team on the planet. One that does not specialize in Earth World War II history. And then, and then he also, yeah, and then he also say, and then he also says, "Quick, beam the Trebles into their engine room," which is a reference to Trouble with Trebles, <laughs> which is, yeah. I think, my favorite episode of the original series. It was uh, nice. Specializes in the Cold War instead. <laughs> oh no! no! The real hero here is the oh, ship. I love Big cook. Newtons. Big Newtons are the best. Makes might <laughs> fine Big Newtons. Okay, so. Yeah. Wow. Right. That was fun. It actually felt like we've done an episode, and we've yes. we've concluded it. Yeah. It's there's like the we, yeah, we can have a fresh episode next session. Yeah. 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 Right. So, <laughs> uh, imagine having a pet tribble. You can't. You can never imagine having a pet tribble. You can only imagine <laughs> having hundreds. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well done, crew. Indeed. They called the pathos a garbage cow. No, they just called it fat. <laughs> uh, PH. <laughs> well, that's a different meaning. Just don't feed it after midnight, sure. <laughs> okay. All the references. Yeah. Getting all the references like out today. Right, so, does anyone have anything they would like to say? Feedback is, of course, always welcome. What went well, what didn't go so well, what anything. Did? It went really well, I think. I really liked it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Except, yes. yet again, as on Saturday, I spent a large portion of the session trying to be diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. You have a combat question. <laughs> what do you expect? Uh, yeah. But <laughs> having to do it for like three, four hours on Saturday, and then another like two mm. hours today. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a very diplomatic week. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, you weren't, oh boy, well, you weren't exactly diplomatic with the final call, were you? They tried to make it undiplomatic first. Mm-hmm. Well, Just yeah. de-escalated yeah, it. That, that is true. Yeah, true. Well. And Willis point out, points out that this is yet another episode well, the first episode, another session in which Kango did not get stuck in the transporter buffer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we'll see, well, next week, we'll see what new adventures await week, the crew of the USS yeah. Pathos as they journey their pathfinding and reconnaissance voyage across space. That should be the intro. <laughs> right there. Ah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, Right. Uh, yeah. So actually, the session next week will not be on Wednesday uh, because Mr. W can't make it to that, but it will be on Thursday next week. All right. Mm. If, 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 yeah. if, if scheduling issues, I mean, <laughs> at the moment we're still in a, in a, a scheduling uh, issue type of uh, situation and I have switched to the seat now, so we're no longer because this is the out the the after stream bit. All oh, right, so okay. we're, we're still live. We're still live. Face cams aren't but visible no. anymore, apart from no. yours. <laughs> uh, I mean, technically, I could get yours over as well, but if I don't, yeah, anyway. but anyway, yeah. So we're still in the temporary stuff because I've got some scheduling things that I need to switch around with things that are happening with me, which means that it's temporary still at the moment. But we'll figure something out. Thank you all very much for coming. Yeah. I've had so much fun. It was really, really tense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> same track time, same track channel, but different track day. Yes, indeed. Eh, yeah. but I find combat very boring. Well, depends on the situation. I, I don't like it that much either, but I think that there are situations where it can be very tense. Mm. Yes, talk to you on Saturday. Next time on yep. Star Trek Pathos. Yes, so bye. everybody, bye. Bye, bye everyone. Indies. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. And good night. Good night. Yes. <laughs> yes. It depends what you are. Yeah. <laughs> Indies. Yeah. For the viewers as well. Yes. Right.